If you're thinking about buying the iPhone 12, stop. Don't waste your money. The iPhone 12 might not be the iPhone you should buy, and in this video I'll tell you why. The iPhone 12 came out in 2020, and I can confidently say that it is a great phone. It has good cameras, modern design, supports all the software features, and so on and so forth. But why shouldn't you buy it? Well, you really don't have to dig that deep to see the issue. For its price, the iPhone 12 is too inferior to the iPhone 13 in far too many ways. But let me explain. Let's start with the display. It's a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display. It's reasonably bright at 625 nits and has a fixed refresh rate of 60 Hz. This panel is objectively very good. High resolution, deep blacks, great color accuracy. But that brightness. 625 nits is what the iPhone 7 had in 2016. Yes, it is enough in most cases, but under the direct sunlight or simply on a bright, sunny day, the iPhone 12's screen will be almost unusable. The display on the iPhone 13, on the other hand, is 28% brighter, peaking at 800 nits. This is a pretty noticeable difference. The iPhone 12 also lags behind in terms of performance. Here the difference isn't all that big, but it is still present. The A14 found in the iPhone 12 is roughly 18% slower than the A15 in the iPhone 13. Currently all the games run fine with high frame rate and high graphical settings. A14 is powerful enough to handle all tasks you can think of and will still be a powerhouse even in 2024. The main issue for me is future-proofing. You don't want your iPhone to become slow and sluggish after a couple more iOS updates. Apple is notorious for slowing down their phones or making certain features exclusive for iPhones with certain chips. If you're liking this video so far, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. It will mean the world to me. The next issue with this phone is pretty minor. But the iPhone 12 doesn't support the horizontal Face ID. It's a small thing, really, and most people won't have any problems with that. However, this feature, which is present on the iPhone 13, makes the whole Face ID experience so much better. However, the biggest issue with the iPhone 12 are the cameras. The main 12 megapixel camera can produce amazing pictures in well lit conditions. Landscapes, food, flowers, anything you shoot during the day will look great. The photos will be very detailed, very colorful, and with good dynamic range. But when you go darker, the camera really starts showing its weaknesses. Without low-light mode, your photos will most likely look dark and greenish. There will be a lot of noise and the photos won't be very usable. With the low-light mode, the camera is able to make up for that, but waiting a few extra seconds without moving the phone to take a picture is not something you have to do on the iPhone 13. The ultra-wide camera follows the same path. It also shoots great during the day, but noticeably struggles in the dark. The image processing algorithms are slightly worse than on the iPhone 13, and getting a good shot can be challenging. I can't say that it is a bad camera, but it's not as good as you expect. The front-facing camera is almost the same as on the iPhone 13, and the difference here is minimal. Photos are pretty good in bright environments and are pretty bad in low light. All the difference in photo quality is of course caused by the different algorithms. The iPhone 12 has only Smart HDR 3, while the iPhone 13 has Smart HDR 4. The iPhone 12 also doesn't support photographic styles, which for some people is a big deal. Those photographic styles are great for creating a personal style that is automatically applied to all photos while shooting. To achieve the same look on the iPhone 12, you need to tinker with post-processing of each individual photo. And believe me, you don't wanna do that. But the worst part about the cameras on the iPhone 12 is the absence of cinematic mode for videos. It's a very useful feature for anyone who wants their videos to be more aesthetic with this nice blur. I know that on the iPhone 13 the cinematic mode only shoots 1080p at 30fps, but it's still a nice feature to have. This video, for example, is shot in cinematic mode on the iPhone 13, so you can first-hand see how visually stunning this mode is. It's a shame that Apple didn't include this mode on the iPhone 12. Another thing that is much better on the iPhone 13 is the battery life. The iPhone 12 has always been a solid one-day phone. 
but it really falls short when compared to one and a half days of the iPhone 13. The battery on the iPhone 12 is smaller and it performs accordingly. Plus, don't forget about the battery degradation. This iPhone 12, after only a year of use, already has 93% of battery health. For comparison, that the same percentage that my iPhone 13 has after one and a half years of use. Think about that. And now we arrive at the price. Apple sells the iPhone 12 new for $599, which is outrageous for two reasons. First, you get only 64 gigs of storage, and second, for exactly the same price, you can get the iPhone 13 mini, which will be much better than the iPhone 12 in every way, except the battery life and the display size. Plus, with the iPhone 13 or 13 mini, you'll get 128 gigs of storage, which is double of what the iPhone 12 offers. On Amazon, you can easily find a refurbished iPhone 12 for a little over $400. A more reasonable 128 gig version will cost you at least $450. The iPhone 13 can be found for $550. I would confidently say that this extra $100 is totally worth paying. Because the iPhone 13 is a much, much better phone in every way. If this video was interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. I'm Andy, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.